So to make this blackboard we take two uh, lengths of double round beading, they will be the sides, um, and we will take another piece uh, mitered, uh, as you can see double round beading, mitered at 45 degrees uh, for the top. Uh, at the bottom we've got two cutouts and we've got two bits of batten which will just be little standoffs so that when we slip the quarter round um, trim uh, in the bottom um, they should all be the same height and then on top of that we place another bit of double um, rounded trim um, and that will make a little tray um, as you can see there that the chalk can be placed in and all the chalk dust will go in and that all sits on 5.5mm uh, hardboard. To cut the quarter round beading I use my uh, chop saw. And the same again to trim the edges of the double round side trim. I now use some wood glue to glue the trims onto the plywood backboard. Um, the, it was a bit cold, so the uh, the wood glue was not particularly uh, interested in coming out of the out of the tub. Um, I then clamp while the glue goes off. I use little clamps to clamp the trim on. Uh, I'm going to put the side on it next. Um, just realised that my glue is not it's not been opened yet. That other one. So I'm going to carry on with the uh, with the old one. Try and get the last few bits out of the old one. Um, put it back on. Give it a bit of a. Oops the wrong one again. <laughs> um, yeah, give it a little wiggle just to, to bed the uh, glue down, uh, clamp it back on with some clamps, make sure it's right up against the edge. I will sand the edge down later. I've got a couple of clamps just to hold it down while the glue goes off. Um, probably I think I move on to do, oh, just wiping off some of the glue from the edges, just making sure everything still fits okay. So we're going to do the little standoff block on this end now, make sure, put it all the way around anywhere where it's going to touch any of the other pieces of, of wood, clamp it down. Next we start gluing the quarter round speeding to the bottom. Just put a little bit on the end where it's going to touch, uh, make sure everything fits alright, and it's good, uh, quickly clamp it. Once that's clamped, um, I move on to the little upstand at the other end. It's a little, little rubber glue on there. Looks like I've already got dribble that I'm using because I'm a bit tight. All right, let's just make sure that's on those surfaces that we're interested in. Clamp it down again. Make sure it's not going to go anywhere. Lastly, we need to apply a little bit of uh, glue to the other beading. Um, oh, I'm just moving the clamps around. Um, a bit short of clamps, so uh, just move around and that will give me four clamps on this side I think. So let's just squidge a bit more wood glue out um, and then yeah, do the ends, just make sure where it's going to touch, where the uh, uh, mitre is at one end, where the, um, the little cutout is at the other end. Give it a little wiggle, clamp it down. Uh, I think I'll use four clamps on here just to try and give it a fighting chance. Oh, stole another one from there. <laughs> right, that's all the beading clamped down now, so uh, all I've got to do now is... The next job is uh, just to put a couple of little pings, pins in the, uh, the through the backboard and into the little off stands. So I've pre-drilled with a very small drill, just uh, tap the pins in. Um, i afraid tapping it in made the uh, camera stand wobble a little bit, so I apologise for that. Um, double speed doesn't show too badly. Uh, then just use the centre punch just to uh, just make sure the head of the pins are below the surface. The next job is to give it a good sand all the way over. Um, just use my little uh, palm sander. Um, just 
just try and take off any rough edges because it's ply it's a little bit rough and a uh, little bit rough and ready this is all made from bits and pieces that I had in the uh, workshop kicking around I didn't go and buy anything especially um, so I'll have to uh, give it a bit of a sand and then probably fill in some bits and pieces and sand it off a little bit more later Next it's time to give the uh, blackboard a bit of a brush off, get rid of all the dust um, and then give the uh, workbench a little bit of a dust down too um, and then we're going to use some wood filler uh, just to fill in any of the little little gaps like between the Now on to uh, part of the job that I really hate, and that's priming. Um, I still haven't done the um, the little front cap on the on the bottom, but I want to because I want to prime um, all of it first, um, and I want to make sure I get the actual blackboard black on the main board before I put the front end on. So we'll paint everything up as as um, as best we can, or at least prime it um, until we do the last bit. Then I'll glue the glue and pin the last bit on at the end. Um, I've never liked painting, um, I find it the most boring part of the whole of uh, making anything really um, and I've never been any good at it either. Uh, my mechanic who trained me um, so when I was in the motor trade, uh, one of the first jobs he gave me to do was uh, to uh, put some hammerite on the uh, rear bumper of a, of, that he'd welded up for a customer and I did warn him, I said I, I'm not very good at painting and he said to me, don't worry if you can piss you can paint so by the time I finish that job, bearing in mind it's hammerite and it should uh, sort itself out, um, he looked at it and goes, wow, I'm never using that phrase again. And he also never asked me to paint anything on a customer's car again. So um, I'd say uh, his phrase of, uh, if you can piss, you can paint, it's obviously not true because I was pretty damn rubbish at painting. And I've not got any better yet. So that's the coat of primer done um, and also uh, there was a coat of pale grey sort of, un I've used it as an undercoat um, on both sides. Uh, now I am trying to paint the actual black for the blackboard using the proper blackboard paint. Um, I'm using a card to try and stay off of the frame. Um, as you can see from the, uh, the state of it, it's working really well, not. Um, I've seen people do this to great effect and I've tried it loads of times and it just never seems to work for me. Um, it just seems to get at the back of the card no matter what I do. I'm sure I'm doing something wrong but I give it a go. Um, I think I gave up then just sort of trying to have a go at doing it without the card and that didn't work. I just, I just cannot paint to save my life. As you can see there I've given up and just done it but I still managed to get it on the frame so uh, that was uh, a really neat job, not. So uh, anyway, I'm going to roll the rest of it. As long as the uh, cutting in is done, we'll roll it. Try not to get it on my work clothes. I'm actually in my office clothes, <laughs> rather than hence why I've got my hand. Well, office clothes and a, a fleece uh, because it's so cold in our office and it's certainly cold in the um, garage here. Um, so I was trying not to get black paint on it all of my clothes because I really don't want to do that. Um, so that's the first, oh, there's a little bit of frustration, you see I hate painting, not sure if I told you this but I really hate painting. So that was the first coat dried off, now we're putting the second coat of uh, black blackboard paint on. At this time I decided I'd mask up the frame a little bit, wish I'd have done that the first time. I was just really worried about peeling the, you know, the masking tape, peeling the, uh, the, the uh, undercoat on the frame off but I thought I just can't do it anymore so uh, so this was a, a quick going over with uh, the roller um, and that's quite a thick coat the second time just because I am sick of putting it on to be honest uh, here we are uh, just removing the masking tape um, probably would have made a lot better job if I'd have masked it both times really but never mind what I'll have to do is I'll have to mask the black and then so I can paint the frame properly um, hopefully going to paint the frame tomorrow with any luck and uh, we'll see how that goes of course I'm going to have to do it a couple of times now because I've managed to bleed black on it but maybe once I've given it a bit more of a sand down you can get some of the black off 
and um, I won't have to do too many coats. My daughter uh, originally said she wanted it, a grey frame but she's now changed her mind and said she wants pink so I've got to see if we've got any pink anywhere. And that's pretty well it for that bit. Next I need to sand down the back. Um, I've used 240 wet and dry paper. Here I am mixing up uh, a pinkish colour from two colours I had kicking around in the garage. Um, all ready for my daughter to have a go at painting the frame herself. Do you think so? It smells like raspberries. So what we're going to do, we're going to dip the brush in there, okay? Get a little bit on there, and we're going to do this, okay? And that's all you need to do. Do you think you can do that? Yeah. Excellent, that's it. Good girl, we need to make sure we cover it fully. So do a little bit more in there. Right on that's side. all right, that's fine, that's all right, that's <laughs> good. That's good. Uh, get it on there. That's good, that's it. Brush that in. Brush it down this side too. And that's it, so it covers. After letting my daughter uh, do some of the frames so that she can feel involved with it, um, I then kind of needed to get on and really <laughs> uh, get on and do it myself. Um, I would love to have let her have done the whole lot, but um, kind of a bit pushed for time. Next up, I'm sanding where I'm going to glue the uh, front of the little tray at the bottom um, onto the main frame. And then I'm going to glue it on. Um, a quick tip here, if your uh, workshop is really cold, <laughs> warm your wood glue up in some warm water first. It might run a little bit better, otherwise I find that this PVA is so thick it's almost unusable. Schoolboy error, um, I've split the end of the wood so I should have uh, pilot drilled it first so here you see me piloting it before putting the next nail in and I pilot the other side as well. The heads are slightly proud so I use a centre punch just to knock the heads down just below the surface of the wood. The next job is to mark out where I'm going to stick the neodymium magnets. Um, I bought these off eBay, um, they've turned out that they're a little bit too small, I've got 10mm diameter ones um, and I think probably should have gone for something like 20mm diameter, they might have been a bit stronger. Uh, unfortunately, although when I put this on the fridge it does sort of stay there it slides down the fridge which isn't really what I want so I've actually actually ended up having to put the uh, the blackboard right at floor level which is a bit of a pity it's okay for my daughter but it would have been nicer if it could have been a little bit higher um, so that was a lesson learnt I didn't know how strong the magnets were going to be um, they are pretty strong you see they're difficult to get out and they jump back and join themselves together again quite easily but yeah not quite strong enough it looks like my Evo stick had uh, gone off. I've probably had it a, a year or two and it's gone off so I've gone and got some more uh, contact adhesive uh, from Wilco's. Um, so I've just stuck little spots on the uh, on the board where I want to uh, where I want to glue these on. Now I'm gluing the backs of the magnets. Um, I then just uh, give it a little smear over um, just to make sure the whole of the surface of the magnet is covered and then I uh, leave it to dry. Unfortunately this one, oh, as you see, <laughs> has uh, joined up with the other one so I had to clean them off and redo those two and try and keep them a bit further away from each other. Uh, here we are after the uh, adhesive has gone off um, and gone to touch dry, um, just sticking them on and giving them a little clamp not sure if these clamps are going to be strong enough. Uh, as it happened, one of the bonds was not good and one of the magnets did fall off in the end. Um, so it's they're still sort of holding on to the fridge without it. Come and have a look at this. 
and here is my daughter coming to see the blackboard for the first time. She's not seen it apart from when she was painting it. Have a look over there. <laughs> is that alright, darling? Yeah? What are you drawing? Is it a person? Who is it? Yeah. Oh, thank you, darling. <laughs> thank you. Oh, bless you. Do you like your blackboard then? Yeah? Oh, jolly good. Well, you can have fun with it now. Okay? <laughs>